c'était pas tant parce que je sais qu'à la nuit a dû être courte pour beaucoup, mais vous avez la pêche quand même à 9h30. Bravo Bon, plus sérieusement, démarrons cette deuxième journée. Hier, on a donné le ton, le sujet clé de ces assises a été vraiment beaucoup débattu, aussi ici, dans cette salle, et on s'est donné une mission. Vous, vous êtes donné une mission. On sait que face à cette menace que nous n'arrivons pas encore à maîtriser autant qu'il le faudrait, l'IA représente aujourd'hui vecteur d'Axac, oui, mais notre mission, votre mission, est celle de renverser cette tendance. On a un vrai espoir, cet espoir a vraiment été déjà euh, fortement euh, appuyé, même au Bifor, que certains ont vécu, Bifor, ici, en amont des assises, c'est par l'IA, c'est par ces nouvelles puissantes nouvelles technologies que l'espoir se trouve. Parce que c'est par cette potentialisation de nos outils que nous allons renverser ces tendances. Et je vais vous dire que cet espoir qu'on a toutes et tous a tellement été au cœur de, de nos partenaires, au point qu'aujourd'hui, on a la chance d'avoir chez nous la cofondatrice de Cloudfair qui est venue exprès pour cette keynote, Michel Zadrine, que je tiens à remercier. Et on l'applaudit vraiment parce qu'elle a fait un long voyage pour les amis de la cybersécurité. Vraiment, elle s'est engagée personnellement depuis un moment et je peux vous dire que son agenda est bien chargé. Donc merci, merci, thank you. Et donc j'invite en scène, sinon je vais la faire moi la keynote et ça suffit. J'invite en scène. Boris Lecker, Michel Zetlin et Guillaume Cécile. Merci, merci Maria. Bonjour à tous, bonjour les assises, good morning uh, everyone. So we're going we're gonna to switch uh, in English, even though uh, uh, Michel is able to uh, understand very well the, the French and some, sometimes a little bit shy to speak French. But, uh, um, and um, when we were preparing this, uh, this keynote, um, uh, I was wondering what is the common pattern of, uh, of Carrefour and Cloudflare. And then uh, as we were thinking of it, uh, I think really the, the common pattern of, uh, of Carrefour and Cloudflare is really uh, innovation. Uh, innovation defines what we are doing at Cloudflare. And after uh, having worked with uh, um, Carrefour for now more than one year, two years maybe? One year. Yeah, one year. Uh, uh, I really discovered that uh, Carrefour is really uh, very uh, advanced in terms, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of, uh, of innovation. And before we, we go uh, and dive into AI and generative AI, I would like maybe to quickly um, introduce yourself, Michelle and, and Guillaume. Sure. Um, good morning, everyone. It's uh, c'est ma première fois à l'ESI, c'est à Monaco, so very happy to be here. Um, I'm Michelle Zatlin. I'm the president of Cloudflare. And we started about 13 years ago. Um, we help organizations around the world with their cybersecurity, connectivity, and build needs. And so it's a real pleasure to be here, and I'm having a great time. So thanks for the warm welcome. Hello, everyone. I'm Guillaume. I'm the SecOps manager at uh, Carrefour. I'm the, um, I have the responsibility of the cybersecurity tool for Carrefour, and at least. Uh, I am the guy that every team, IT team in Carrefour call when they have a new technology to deploy and to say what we can do with it. AI is changing the world, as, as uh, Maria shared during, during the introduction. But, but uh, be before we go in, in, into the impact of, uh, of how uh, this is impacting cybersecurity, uh, I'm curious to understand more how AI is changing uh, your business and, and companies in, in, in general uh, that we are seeing. Maybe, Guillaume, you can share your view on that. Yeah, um, Carrefour has uh, um, have always a customer in the mindset. Then the first AI program we deploy is um, a program for customer to prepare the basket list on the e-commerce website. For example, you can say, um, I want to prepare a slight lemon uh, chicken for the dinner, and it will prepare all the items for the basket list. You can say it's, it's easy, it's not a problem, but after that, you can go deeper. You can say, um, we are six, then it will change the quantity. Uh, and the AI will not display all the items that everyone is in, in the fridge or in the kitchen, some salt, paper, or butter. But butter is not the right position because if in your preparation you need m 
enough butter, many butter, the AI will say, okay, have you got enough butter in your fridge or should I have to add some butter in the cart list? This is uh, the way we, we are working on. And after that, you can say, oh, I'm sorry, but I want only organic items that you would change the list. You can say, I want not more 20 euros for the dinner and you would change the list to adjust the price, everything like that. And the second part, we display, we change the AI for the supply chain to optimize the supply chain, to organize a new supply chain, to change how we are going to display the data in each data warehouse, how we are going to move the, the, the food in the data warehouse. This is the second one. And we are not customer, we are even employers at Carrefour, and since yesterday, we deploy a new, uh, new things, new AI, just for the human resources, and to answer all the common questions employee can have on human resources where I can uh, I can I can make what is the, 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 the good things to put some vacation where I can find uh, the, the document because I've gone to have a baby everything you need this is all the changing are going in care for for the customer those are great examples I'm also hungry after hearing about your chicken example so um, uh, anyhow, uh, so at Cloudflare, we're also doing a lot with AI. Um, and so in my opinion, AI, the invention of electricity, the invention of the internet, the, the introduction of AI, that's how big of a deal AI is, which is why organizations, you read about it all the time, organizations are trying, experimenting it, and it's so early. So maybe I can share two ways that Cloudflare um, is using AI that might be helpful to the audience. So the first is actually cybersecurity protection is a really good use case for AI. So we use a lot of AI in our cybersecurity products to help protect our customers. Um, we crowdsource a lot of the threat data around the world, and then we use AI to predict the, the zero day vulnerabilities, and it works really, really well. Yesterday, we stopped 140 billion cyber attacks on behalf of our customers. And it's be using things like machine learning a and AI that allow us to do that. So it's really, really effective. And so I think it's really important to be thinking about how can you build AI into your products? You know, Carrefour is food. Think about it in your own businesses, how you can build it in. The second part, which, I, which I'm really excited about, is we know AI is going to be so important to every organization. And everyone's trying to figure out what's it going to look like, how can we improve the customer experience, how do you make your own operations better? But improving your customer's experience, we want to help enable that. And so Cloudflare, we run a global network. Um, and within the global network, we've put GPUs at the edge of the network. And th what that allows is organizations to run the inference, not the data models, but the inference of those models closer to where people are asking the questions. And so you could imagine if you are an internet, of, an internet of Things company, where you have devices out in the wild, where you can now use the edge of the network to do the inference for AI questions. So we're really excited about that, building the foundation for that. It's very early. This is a couple weeks old. And so I'm not sure what people are going to build with it yet. But I, I can't wait to hopefully come back next year and share some of the exact, exact use cases. That's, that's fa fa fascinating, really. Uh, Getting more into the generative AI um, uh, topic, and, and as uh, generative AI is getting more and more adopted, uh, what would be, uh, wh what are the risk vulnerabilities, and what would be your advice to the CISOs here uh, in terms of this adoption of, of uh, generative AI? The, the first point is to work, AI needs to be fed by data. You need more and more data, enough data, too much data to, to make the, the AI working well. Then if you want to, 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 to have something relevant, you need the right data. But for the security purpose, you, you have to check if the data is really relevant for all the use cases you are going to have. Then you have to control the data. You have to say exactly what is going to be put to train the AI model. And is it relevant for the use case or not? Is it interesting for the use case or not? This is the first part. And the second point is you have, in retail, we got many, many, many customer data. We've got name, we've got address, we've got email, we've got telephone number, and we've got shopping list. The frequency you are in store, the frequency you buy something, you've got, we've got many, many, many things. And we have to be compliant with the law, with GDPR, for example. And you have to be very, very close about that, very, very attention about that. 
is it okay or not with the DPR? Is it a declare for the DPO or not? What you do exactly, is it in the contract and the consentment of the user or not? Even if you train the data. You know, um, I travel around the world. It's actually the fifth country I've been to this year, meeting with um, companies around the world. And it's interesting, when the topic of AI comes up, there's a l there are some organizations like Capful that are really um, leaning in and innovative and experimenting and using it in a lot of different ways. And I would say that you are like way ahead of the curve of using it. They've thought through a lot of the data side of it. Um, there are other organizations that um, aren't sure where to start because they're scared about a lot of the risk, because there are real risk, right? Um, I think one of the good mental models is once you put the data into the AI model, you can't get it back. You know, you can't extract it back out of the model, and that's really scary if you run an organization with sensitive information, and every organization has some sensitive information, right? And, you, and so it's almost like you decide not to move forward because you're, you're worried about the downside. So I think what Guillaume said is really important is making sure that you have some sort of process of you know how the data is getting in so that you feel comfortable. So you can get the upside, you can get the innovation and the productivity gains which every organization needs without the risk of making sure that none of your sensitive data goes in. And you know if you start to think about that, it's just like data loss prevention, but a new use case for DLP. And you know, what's interesting at Cloudflare, we build this connectivity cloud, and that's one of the services we offer is this ability for organizations to say, hey, I want, I want a way to make sure that none of my sensitive data is going in. It's a kind of another use case for DLP, and, and at Cloudflare we have that, and we have customers using that. And so I think if that's something that you're worried about, I think find a solution, either your, a proprietary solution that you build in-house around a process, or find a, um, a technology solution to help you so that you can get the advantage of, of, of all the positive upside. Um, the second thing I'll just say is uh, I do think that it's changing really, really rapidly and not everything is gonna work and that's okay. I think that the goal is not for every single thing that your organization does with AI to be successful. That's impossible, that's not how innovation works. You're gonna try 10 things and maybe a couple things are really, really good and some things you're like, well, that's not worth it. And so I think having a way to evaluate what's going well and not going well is important too, because just just starting something is really important, but also saying, hey, that's not working, let's stop it, and then use those resources and time to do something else. That's uh, re really interesting. I was, I was reading that 42% uh, of, um, of employees uh, uh, have uh, already used AI, and uh, out of that, yeah. two thirds have not informed their manager or directors. And I'm part of those, by the way. <laughs> um, we'll talk after this. Yeah, <laughs> but that, that's that's that could be also an acceleration for uh, zero trust adoption uh, in terms of of, of controlling the this access and generative AI is is part of um, of one of the big transformation as as both of you are the other at the heart of innovation in 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 both companies. Uh, what other trends or transformation do you do you see um, uh, on the market as you as you are talking to customers and, and in your organization, Guillaume? For for my side, uh, for Carrefour side, there is no really impact of the cyber security is working. We are uh, going to control the um, the background of the other uh, AI, the hardware, all the time. It's exactly the same that the other. We are going to control the um, operating system. We are going to and the new change is the model. What we do with the model? What is the impact if someone take control of the model? For example, in the supply chain, we are in July, and the model say, you have to, to buy ton of umbrella. Is it relevant or not? And is it normal or not? This is, for, for you men, it's okay. It's not, it's not relevant, it's a, it's, there is a problem, but what if the, the change is very slow, is very not detected? What happened really in the system? What is, what is the impact for the company? Um, for example, um, we monitor everything in Carrefour of the AI. What is the request? What is the answer? And we check if there is some drift or there is some, some mistake. For example, last week, it's a, it's a real, real fact. Last week, we detect that uh, in, the, in the customer uh, AI, when you can ask him, uh, where is the nearest store from me right now, there is a change. Before, the, ch the, well, the list of store is, is displayed 
whatever on the if it's a, a hypermarket or supermarket, and it's uh, it's mixed, it's no problem. But since two weeks, hypermarket was always first, and supermarket as in the bottom, and this is a change. And what what does that mean? What is it? For the fun fact, I know you love when you say fun fact, boys. Um, the, the for the fun fact, it's because the file that is put inside the AI every day to refresh the, this data have changed the format. On the first format, there is all the data alphabetically, alphabetically ordered and no distinguish for supermarket or hypermarket. And the last file, there is hypermarket top and supermarket at the bottom. Then the ch this the sample change change everything for us. And the other part, we speak about data, is there is a way to put some data and say to the AI, okay, this data is confidential. Then you don't have to display this data in detail. You don't have to do it. You can't do it. It's not possible for you to display the detailed data or the, or the raw data. But there is a prompt. There is a question. I don't know all. I don't know where. But there is one question that the AI will say, I display the data for you. You have to keep that in mind, in your mind, when you set up AI model. This is very important. For this is the, the way that the change the relationship with some some input with the cybersecurity for us. So interesting. Those are such good examples because they're so simple. You exactly. think it's, you said, oh, of course, that file changes, of course, but these are the sorts of real life things that teams have to kind of keep an eye on right now. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe uh, zooming out a little bit about some other trends. I think there are a lot of trends right now, which actually makes all of our jobs a lot harder <laughs> because there's just some big shifts going on and it's hard to know what's going to stay and what's going to change. Um, maybe a couple to add that might be interesting. Um, on the cybersecurity front, you know, new vulnerabilities continue to be really top of mind. And again, I don't need to tell this room, but even earlier this week, there was this large vulnerability in, in the HTTP2 protocol. And these are big, scary, gnarly situations for companies. And, um, you know, this there was this vulnerability that was ex exposed that broke all previous records of DDoS attacks in terms of size by more than three times. That's really scary. It was something that Google and a Amazon and actually Cloudflare also came to the market to help um, tell more about this vulnerability. But three times the size, you just think about your organization, could I handle three times the size? Maybe not, like it, that's a big, big, big shift. And so I think we have to stay vigilant and continue to work together. And so we, th we see attacks getting larger um, and, and that's scary for if you're an organization. The good news, I think the technology is a lot better today and so make sure that you have good layer seven and layer f three and four um, protection because uh, several vendors on the market can help protect you including ones like Cloudflare. So that's on the cybersecurity front. On, the, on more broadly, there's a huge convergence and um, uh, between networking teams, security teams, and IT teams. And it's interesting, you know, five, 10 years ago, those were pretty siloed organizations that can make decisions that they had a lot of control over. But today, you're making a new decision. It's hard to make a decision without getting input from the networking, if you're in the security team, to get without getting input from your networking counterparts and your IT counterparts. And in some organizations, those teams work really well together. So it's quite collaborative and it's exciting because you learn, you get to know each other better. In other organizations, it's harder. Maybe they don't know each other, or it's not okay to go talk or to re recommend a solution, and they say, well, I didn't recommend it, so I'm not gonna approve it, and it becomes a little bit of a stalemate. And so this convergence of networking, having security built in, and so the security teams having to talk to networking, and now zero trust, is a, which is definitely an IT situation but needs security input, all of a sudden the lines that used to be pretty clear are becoming much more blurred. And so I see that uh, across many organizations. And I think um, if I just kind of, if you, if you, if you do a, a bell curve, there's some organizations that are faring really well with that and there's others who are having a hard time. And, and I worry a little bit about the ones who are 
not making decisions to modernize their enterprises because of internal um, organizational processes and how organizational structures. So I think that um, that's an important trend that I see right now, and I'm curious to see how the next three years work out for that. So we're talking about consolidation. Uh, do you see, uh, Guillaume, as well, uh, consolidation in, in, in your solution in the organization uh, within Carrefour as well? Network, security, and IT in general? Of course, of course. When, when we start working with Codefair, the, the goal was to, to reduce the, the number of tools we have and to not chain all the tools, but have only one tool and to say everyone, uh, every team that is involved in this process have the same tools and the same dashboarding and the same metrics. And everything is unified and everything is talking about the same thing. That, i that is the main goal when we start working with Cloudflare. Guillaume has a concept of uh, six in one uh, that he shared a yes. couple of, of weeks ago. So if you are curious about that, uh, come and come and, uh, and talk to, to, to him. He's, he's very uh, interesting and passionate. So uh, transformation comes with, with obstacles and, and, and people who are not always uh, embracing tr uh, transformation. Um, what, what would be your, your advice to the CISOs here? Uh, in terms of dealing with obstacles, c uh, helping convince their boards on, on making this transformation and not waiting to transform? What would be your, your, your advice, Bo Boss there, there, is, there, is, there is not this problem in Carrefour. For Carrefour, there is no this problem. We, we have a, a board, we have FISO that is always want to go faster and to go in the technology and go in front of, uh, of everything. Then we, we have the, the quarter time in advance like we say uh, yesterday, all the time. Then we want to be a first, we want to be uh, in, the, in the move. Then there's no problem with that. But we have to do something wi with, with that, not for regulate, but to have, to have the control that I say. And we, we made um, a rule set in Carrefour uh, with, a, with a security team. We made a rule set in three points. The first point is what you say, AI is used by employee, even if they have the, ac the, 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 the accordance with management or not. And we say, okay, AI is a choice. You can use AI in Carrefour, no problem. But, and there is a but in each rules, but public AI without any sensitive data. And if you don't know if it's sensitive data, maybe it is, and come to us, we will, uh, we will, uh, we will check. This is the first point. The second rules is uh, if you need sensitive data, it's okay, but, always a but, you go back uh, with a private model and a private AI. Okay, no sensitive data in private AI, and the second but in this reason, and no auto learning model with this sensitive data. We don't want you put some data for a request, and then other people have this data for his answer. We don't want to share this kind of data. This is the second one. And the third rule is if you have uh, sensitive data, you put on a, on a private model. If you need an auto learn model, it's okay, but, always a but, you have to do um, a few people are authorized to use this model and this use case. And all the people that are involved to use this model need to have the same level of agreement of the data that is shared in the model. And with these three rules, we can cover mostly all the use cases in Carrefour. And this is the rule we are deploying right now. And this is how we, 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 we manage the solution with the board, with all the team. And that's why everyone come to me or to my team to say, we are going to deploy this one. Is it relevant? Is it in, 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 the, in the, right, uh, the right rule set? Or is it OK or not? Or we are, can, we are going to do it? Um. I feel like many of your colleagues are going to come find you, Guillaume, after and find out how you how how you're able to do this so well at Carrefour. Because I know that's not the same for every organization. Where um, um, I was with a, a customer recently, and it was their uh, chief security officer, and we were talking about uh, you know a lot of opportunities and modernization. And I said something about you know your boss, and he said, okay, my it was a railroad ra road company. And he said, my boss is the CIO. And he knows nothing about technology. He only knows about railroads. He's been in the industry for 35 years, and he only knows about railroads. And our CEO even knows less about technology. In fact, 
every time I come up with, when every time I use the word transformation or modernization, they don't listen to me. Instead, they hire a consultant to make the recommendation and then they go with what the consultant says. And so I think that these are the tale of, that. I mean, that's a real life example that just happened a couple months ago. And so I'm sure some of your organizations are in, in, are, are in that and you have to find a way to navigate how you bring in the new, tech, the new modernization and explain why it's important. I think um, in those cases, it's really helpful if you talk about risk because C-level executives and boards care about managing risk in an organization. It's their number one. And they probably don't care about the coolest and then being innovative, but they do want to manage their risk. And so putting in the context of right now we have a cybersecurity risk because we're using services that were maybe right 10 years ago but no longer current in the shifting la threat landscape, okay, that's interesting. Or my supply chain, we need to make it more innovative of how, we, how we're managing the supply chain. And there's many examples around this um, where it becomes down to enterprise risk. And I think that that is a really if, um, it, uh, effective way to help perhaps have a conversation with someone who's not interested in innovation, even when you are. So it helps bridge the gap. Very good advice, thanks. And uh, maybe one, one, one final question, the technology, Innovation is moving so fast. Uh, what is your advice um, to this room on how do you stay up to date with the latest technology, latest innovation, Guillaume? One word, run. <laughs> run, in the right way, but run. Follow the system, follow the model, follow everything you, you need, and be helped by people that know everything. But if you miss the, the train right now, it will be very, very difficult to go back into the train in the future. Uh, it's not an evolution for, for, for us, for everyone, it's a revolution. Then we need to have something, we need to be involved in the solution, we need to have information, we need to follow exactly what happens in the future, because AI will be everywhere in a few, in few years. Then if you don't know exactly what happened, if you don't know exactly what is done with AI, uh, it's it will be very, very difficult for our job to be something, to do something right. You know, I think um, I couldn't agree more where it's if you just start learning and you start kind of getting, even if you don't know a lot, you read the article, you come to a conversation like this, you're like, oh, I learned a little bit more. And next time you keep, you just kind of keep following. And I actually think that's why or, um, conferences like Les Assises are so important because it brings people together to be able to talk about what's new, what are you doing, what, what worked, what didn't work. And so I think sharing examples is really helpful. And then coming to or, uh, conferences like this is super important. And of course, um, you know you can't always come to a beautiful Monaco to the to the to the event. And so, in between in between Les Cis, um, I think there's a lot of resources online of people writing about um, new current things, whether it's personal blogs, um, people's LinkedIn accounts. But I do think uh, reading real life ex examples from operators who are actually trying to practice it uh, is really really important. Great. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, uh, Guillaume. Thank you, Michel. Uh, if you want to continue the discussion, if, uh, si vous voulez nous, nous poser des questions, vous invite tous sur notre stand 163 uh, niveau Ravel pour continuer la discussion avec Michel et avec Guillaume qui seront là encore. Uh, Guillaume sur les deux jours et Michel sur la journée. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Merci, hein? merci. Thank you, Michel. Merci. Hein? Basically, you, you move.